Hi. Do you remember this guy? We have talked about him before. Perhaps it's a bit difficult to uh, recognise him from this statue uh, in Prague. His name's Andrija Mohorovicic. And his surname, I think, uh, should uh, trigger some uh, memories from year, year 12. This lesson, though, isn't about the ideas he uh, derived about the structure of the, the crust uh, and the boundary between the crust and the mantle. What I want to do in this lesson is try and consider uh, whether he was right. What we need to do today is to try and uh, explore what we actually mean by the moho. Um, and this is the first of a two-part lesson on this. You're going to need your A3 worksheet um, entitled What is the Moho? The first part of the lesson is all about the data. And this is data that's been um, worked on by a team uh, based at Cardiff University, led by uh, Professor Chris McLeod, uh, who's been uh, exploring uh, this idea of sea floor spreading and whether what we understand about the oceanic crust is actually right. Now, before you do this lesson, you should have completed the homework on the oceanic crust. You need to have, if you like, the general understanding uh, of, uh, of the structure of the oceanic crust if we're going to assess uh, some potentially new evidence. Okay, we know from seismic evidence the structure of the Earth and the mantle. We covered this uh, back in um, uh, topic uh, F4.1. And we know that the mantle um, is made of peridotite. We find uh, these lumps of peridotite, um, these mafic inclusions uh, in igneous rock, uh, chock full of olivine, um, brought up by volcanoes uh, from the topmost part of the mantle to give us that clue about what it's made of. Mohorovicic discovered uh, through uh, seismic evidence something about the structure of the crust. He discovered that um, Continental crust and oceanic crust is very different. Uh, they have different thicknesses, different heights, different densities, different structure. And he found that there was a very clear seismic boundary between uh, this crustal material and the mantle beneath. Um, beneath the continents, it can be vary from 20 down to about 90 kilometers. Uh, underneath the oceans, it's a fairly consistent seven or so kilometers. But this boundary between the two, named the Moho after it. If you look at the thickness of this um, oceanic crust, it's pretty consistent. The Atlantic is a little bit thicker but maybe only by um, a few hundred metres. Uh, we can see that um, oceanic crust is thicker the older it gets. That's as a result of sediment sitting on top of it. So this crust then, being relatively uniform, uh, really regardless of where on um, the Earth's surface we find this oceanic crust, um, it actually has uh, a distinct structure to it as well. It's that structure that uh, we looked at in the Oceanic Crust homework. What Chris McLeod is doing, though, is trying to understand whether the seismic velocity difference is as a result of uh, different structures or perhaps something else. Now to do this, um, 
or to test this idea, what we're going to do is we're going to work on uh, the data that uh, he has generated. Let's start with looking at seismic velocities. I've given you in table one uh, a range, uh, a set of values for seismic velocities measured in different rock types. What I'd like you to do is have a go at um, plotting these up as a histogram. Okay, so each measurement would be uh, one square uh, on this histogram. Uh, and what I'd like you to do to, to be able to tell them apart is use a different colour for each rock type. Okay, have a go at that now. Okay, so if we plot our, our data up, your graph should look something like this. So we've got a small number of measurements there. And we can label up our rock types like that. We can see that different rock types have different seismic velocities. Going from basalt with the lower velocities through to gabbro through to peridotite. And there are clear gaps between these. There are clear differences between these different rock types. It's how perhaps we can tell from seismic evidence that the different uh, layers within the oceanic crust uh, are a, of a different rock type. Okay. Now there are some issues with this. Uh, ocean floor dredging sometimes pick, uh, picks up um, rather than basalt from the oceanic crust, uh, altered peridotite. You can see fresh peridotite on the left full of uh, olivine. When that gets water into it though, and that water starts to, uh, to alter, to weather, uh, the olivine, it turns into a mineral we call serpentine or serpentinite. Now, if we have our layer cake model everywhere around the world, then why is that at the surface? That should be much deeper down. What we should have at the surface are sediments and um, basalt pillar lavas. So, because our seismic evidence is, is slightly indirect, we're not seeing the actual rocks, it poses a question of whether it's actually uh, the case everywhere. Let's have a look at the effect of serpentinization. In table two, I've given you a uh, set of data about uh, the relationship between serpentinization and earthquake wave velocity. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to plot this as a scatter graph uh, and then draw a line of best fit for me. Is there a relationship between serpentinization and P wave velocity? Have a go at that now, please. Okay, let's see what we've come up with. If I plot the data for each of those points in the table, we get a scatter like that. Now that's a very strong relationship, clearly, between P wave velocity and, so, and the percentage serpentinization. We see a, a strong negative correlation there. So serpentinization increases, 
the P wave velocity decreases. A couple of questions to think about. We can see what the effect is, uh, what that uh, serpentinization does to uh, the velocity of P waves. The question is why? Why is this such a good relationship? What's the, the mineralogical, perhaps, differences between olivine and serpentinite? Have a think about that. Perhaps go look it up. See what you can work out. Okay, so if we know we have these um, wave velocities in these different layers that you can see um, on the graph that's on your sheet, and we now know the relationship between P wave velocity and serpentinization, can we plot uh, how serpentinization may change in each of the different layers? Have a go at plotting that graph now. Okay. If we plot this up, what we can see is a different model. Some questions to think about. With this alternative model, what might the MOHO represent? Is it the boundary between the crust and the mantle? Or is it something else? And can we, just using seismic evidence, tell which model is correct? Is it the different structured uh, layers that you learned about in the homework? Or is it a change in the amount of serpentinization uh, of peridotite from the mantle? Can we then uh, still use seismic data? to justify this. And also, is this something that happens everywhere or just in particular locations? It's an interesting idea. So, as we watch the sunset on the Indian Ocean, uh, with conclusions in Malaga Say, uh, for reasons we'll see in a moment, we have data now that suggests there could be alternative explanations. We could be seeing a different structure of the oceanic crust. What we need to do next lesson is think about how this data could actually be tested. How could it be proved? Or even disproved? We need to be able to test these ideas. I'll see you then.